Hi, my name uh, is Pedro Moreira da Silva, and I'm the senior product designer for the source code uh, group in the create stage. And today I'm going to talk to you about the multi line comments in merge request feature, uh, and I'll try to frame it as a uh, story about iteration. Uh, most of all, uh, not so much about the feature itself. So, um, brief introduction the source code group has three, uh, sorry, two categories the source code management and the code review. Today, we're going to be focusing on the code review because that's where the um, discussion and reviewing capabilities exist. Um, of course, that, that would mostly be uh, in merge requests. Uh, that's what most people know. Um, so let's start with the user goal. So the best way that I could describe this um, as if uh, Sasha, the software developer, would say it is when giving feedback on someone's changes, I want to make it clear what I'm referring to so that everyone is aware of what needs to be addressed. And um, this is a very, or it sounds like a very broad statement. Uh, and I think it is. It's also quite straightforward. Uh, and uh, that is seen by the fact that we already, already have solutions in place to address this user goal uh, at le different levels of granularity. So um, on the bottom left corner of this slide, you can see we have a list of solutions. Today, we already have general comments that can apply to, I don't know, a whole issue or epic or merge requests. Um, and people will then say what they're referring to, what they're asking, what they would like to see addressed. Um, in merge requests, we also have single line comments where you can pinpoint exactly which line you're referring to and what needs to be addressed on that line. But today it's difficult to address changes that span multiple lines. And that's what we're trying to um, address here with multi-line comments. And maybe in the future, uh, there are already requests for these. Uh, we can then comment on the commit messages themselves, whole files, or even specific words. To give you an example, on the right side of the, the slide, you can see two images of two comments that I um, found today while I was looking at a uh, merge request that I had worked on. And they give, an in, give you the sense of why multi-line comments are necessary. So. Um, the first one by Simon, uh, he says, can this be moved to before block inside this context? And the line that he's commenting on, line 21, does not have anything uh, that you can see there that relates to context. The context he's referring to is two lines above. So he, the, this is, would be a, a good case for a multi-line comment where Simon would select the uh, lines 19, 20, and 21 as the, con the necessary context for what he's trying to address. Um, another example below, uh, not in code, but more in, in prose uh, format, um, is uh, when I was working with Tori in a merge request, and we had this table in Markdown, uh, and he, she left this comment um, by selecting the first line of the table, which only contains the table headers. And she says, I'm struggling with this table, uh, so on and so on. And then at the end, she says, can you elaborate a bit on, more on the table? And the whole context of the table is missed because you have to scroll down to find the rest of the table. Um, and sh this actually is a comment that uh, refers to the whole table, not just the table headers. So you can now see just with these two small uh, examples why this would be a good uh, feature to work on. Uh, from the business side, um, I, I think this is a good introduction to that business goal. This is the oldest issue I could find regarding multi-line comments. It was opened four years ago. It has 175 upvotes. And uh, I'll just read a couple of the comments that I found there. I think the first one by Brett Higgins kind of summarizes both the user goal and the, the business goal. Uh, and you'll understand in a minute. So Brett says, I'll throw in my vote here as well. This is a very nice to have that my company relies heavily on in review board. Now, here's a parenthesis. Review board is one of our competitor tools uh, in the code review space. He then continues to say that GitLab expands upward in a diff from the location of a comment, and it's often unclear which lines the comment is referring to. 
unless you put your comment directly below the line in question, at which, which point you lose the context following that line if you're in the discussion view. So there are lots of, uh, he's basically summarizing what I had just showed you visually. Uh, and we also have comments from um, our uh, customers uh, and, and sales teams saying that customers are avoiding the need to use a third party competitor and they would like to see this feature in GitLab. We also have then another comment saying, this is a huge miss for my team as we try to completely transition from Perforce slash RB to GitLab. And the list of comments goes on and on about customers or uh, our sales team saying that people are considering moving to GitLab, but they would like this feature and this is something that they miss a lot. Um, so the business goals are very straightforward, or at least these are the two I think are the most uh, prominent. One of them is trying to increase the amount of new business by helping uh, potential customers migrate from competitor tools and also, of course, increase our retention of existing customers and users to avoid them fleeing to another tool just to use this feature. Um, I did a brief competitor analysis looking at what other tools in the space were doing with this feature, and I found that five of our eight main competitors in code review support this feature to comment on multiple lines at the same time. The most common interaction pattern is the drag and release to indicate lines, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and most of them highlight the commented range on hover, so they give a more visual indicator of exactly which lines are being addressed. And the last observation um, is that very few of them have keyboard support. So I think this is one area where there's an opportunity for us to differentiate. And also, I think this point about the lack of keyboard support and the lack of uh, a pointer um, or just relying heavily on pointer devices, you'll see that in our first, our first iteration. So this is, uh, I think, the phrase that best describes what we have been doing in the past few months. Um, and this was, so think big, ship small, learn fast. It was originally introduced to me by Nick Post as think big, start small, move fast, uh, which is also the title of a popular book on innovation. Uh, and you, there's a link there for the original uh, comment where our Nick Post shared that. Um, and I think uh, that this, rephrase that I did uh, of the original sentence is more adapted to our way of work. Uh, and I'll show you how this uh, applies to uh, GitLab and in merge requests specifically. So to give you an example of how all of this works, and I think this is a good metaphor for what we're lacking at our, in our product development process at GitLab. So this is a painting by uh, Georges uh, Seurat, and it took him two years to create this painting. And it's called A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte. So he went through multiple ideas, sketches, and mock-ups before getting here. So a lot of iteration. And for this painting, he applied a technique called pointillism that only uses very small colored dots and no brush strokes at all. And to land on this masterpiece, he had to focus both on the details as well as on the big picture, right? And this is, I think, the, the part where we fail a lot uh, um, and, and interestingly, he's, it's also a, um, um, oops, sorry, uh, I don't know what happens. I kind of lost the sharing, I apologize. I don't know why. Internet for some reason looks like it's not great, but Okay, I think I, I'm here already. So let me share my screen. Okay, so uh, as I was saying, so this is a very common, uh, a common product management uh, metaphor is you have to see both the trees and the forest at the same time. And so I think uh, that the, the phrase think big, ship small, learn fast allows us to do just that. So let me sprint forward because we've lost a bit of time here. So think big, what is the vision for multi-line comments? So the first thing that we did was a usability test with a prototype uh, where we, the three main questions were, which part of, of the design are easily understood, which raised the most questions, and is the drag and release gesture that intuitive or not? 
Um, and you can see the drag and release gesture that I was showing here in this uh, small GIF. And that usability testing allowed us to have confidence on what is working, what is not working, how we can order the right, uh, the implementation in the right uh, place. So the second part, ship small, how can we break that down, this big vision uh, with this uh, amazing design with the drag and release gesture. And that is when the challenges start to come up. So the first challenge was that initially, before we started any of this, we already had the assumption that it would be difficult to implement a good user experience in a single iteration. And the primary concern here were the complex and substantial changes to the front end. And the front end engineering manager, Andre, he reviewed the designs and identified specific challenges. One, the drag and release gesture, naturally was something that would be difficult to pull off in a single iteration, or at least pull it off well. And the second one is showing overlapping comments. Um, so I think the, the thing that helped us here was going back to the user's goal and thinking exactly how can we make the smallest change to help users uh, clarify what they're referring to in their multi-line comments. And so we, we actually iterated on top of the first iteration before getting to uh, the, the first iteration itself. So this was the first uh, design, uh, very basic. You'd have buttons to add and subtract lines from your commenting range. We then also thought about, oh, why don't we have a start multi-line comment button or we can also have a uh, number input where people can use the keyboard as well to uh, increase and decrease the number of lines they're affecting. Um, and what about buttons? We could also use buttons. Or maybe we can go back and use that uh, initial design with the plus and minus buttons. Uh, but the final, I think, winning design that kind of checked all of the boxes was something as simple as this. Just a drop down where you can select the lines that you're affecting. And so this is exactly what we're shipping in this first iteration, a basic drop-down UI, which allows you to select the number of lines, uh, and then you can see them represented when you publish the comments, saying comments on lines X to Y. Simple as that, and this addresses the user's goal in a very basic way. And of course, this is not the amazing user experience interaction with the Dragon release, but this is a very accessible uh, way to implement this feature for any kind of user, even if they're not using a pointer device. So iteration inside of the development itself, one of the things that we did was right from the start, set this behind a feature flag um, so that we could test and ship things and merge things without breaking the existing experience. And then in the first merge request, we decided to um, iterate on our development process itself because the first merge request took one and a half months and 143 comments to get merged. And that's a long time. It's a very big merge request. Um, and so what we decided was to change um, and, and just focus it on the inline mode and not the side-by-side -side mode when you're comparing changes. The second MR would then tackle the side-by-side -side mode. So again, you can see how we're breaking this up and learning from the first MR what went wrong and what went well and applying it to the second MR. And just so you have some context, both MRs are so big that the front-end engineer working on this, Justin, he counted at least 900 different testing scenarios that would, some of them would be, of course, tested automatically. Some would be tested manually uh, by myself and front-end engineers. And all of this was just to implement this simple basic drop-down UI. Um, so learn fast. What did we learn? How can we learn more from this iteration process? So again, the first thing is having the feature flag enabled. Um, we will do that for just the gitlab.org group um, for internal testing. And we will do that for that basic dropdown UI. And with internal usage and seeing how people pick it up and what is working, what is not working, that will allow us to have more confidence on what we should build next. We already have some high confidence regarding the second iteration, which would be to highlight the comment line range when you hover uh, one of the comments, for example. You can see the lines 10 and 11 highlighted here because that's what the comment is referring to. This has high confidence because a lot of competitors do it. The usability testing proved that this is a very valuable 
um, feature to see visually what the comments are referring to. Um, and we also have a good feeling that this will come up when we, once we enable the feature flag for the GitLab.org group. The third iteration is the drag and release gesture. We have some confidence, but not a lot of confidence that it needs to be the third thing for us to ship. So right now it's kind of in the, not necessarily in the backlog, but we're waiting to see how real usage and user feedback will get us there. Uh, and by this point, we will probably also instrument this feature to have more data uh, so that we can make better decisions in the future. Um, I apologize for the internet problems or Google Slides problems. Uh, this is what I had to share. So thank you so much and feel free to comment in the issues.